Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, this is Rob with Old Guy Tech TV, and today is Tech Talk. I'm here with Jonathan Charney, and we're going to discuss some of the things that are going on on the Internet. And, you know, our politicians are trying to stick their nose in the stuff again, so you just never know what's going to go. But I'll tell you what, why don't we jump to John here, and we'll see uh, see what John has to say. So, John, what do you got going? Uh, the first one is Microsoft has uh, begun the, the countdown. It's a for the, the end of life support for XP, it's down to a thousand days, which is a couple of more years. I say it'll be the end of support will be 2014, and uh, basically it's saying that you know the you know they've had a, a pretty long run with XP. It's been 11 years, which is an amazing amount of time for an operating system. Yeah, you know we covered this story uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about the end of life for XP and and what it's going to mean. It's kind of like the old legacy systems that are still out there running. You know, you got you have a a, a lot of machines still out there doing mundane work uh, on an OS that is doing just fine, and yet Microsoft is saying, okay, well we're not going to support it anymore after a thousand days, right? But here's the, the here's the funniest thing on this. Um, I quote, to ease transition, Microsoft has already flagged that companies upgraded to Windows 7 would be able to downgrade to XP anytime until 2020. Well, that's bizarre. End of life is 2014. So end of life is 2014. But, but if they can you... downgrade till 2020. <laughs> How weird is that? Does that make any sense? No, that's why I thought that's why I printed the program the, the, this one out because I don't remember it talking about. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. No, I mean, it, that's crazy. So, in other words, buy Windows Seven, install Windows Seven, and guess what? You can downgrade to XP. I'm assuming this is uh, companies only, but it's still. Is it running like a virtual XP? Is that what? Is no, it? it actually says be able to up downgrade to XP. It doesn't say anything about actually running a virtual uh, service from it. It just says literally you can upgrade or downgrade to uh, XP anytime. Hmm. Because doesn't Seven now have the ability to run an XP mode? Yeah, there is an XP mode. I never used it because my you know I don't have the, the latest and greatest hardware on my current PC. But yeah, there's a way to do it. There's a number of ways you can do it. There's a Microsoft hypervisor. There's VirtualBox. They even have an XP mode built in somewhere that I've never built, accessed. Built in hardware. The le allegedly there's a XP mode that's an actual virtualization in F7 itself. At least there was with Vista. I think. Virtualization. Okay, so. But I've never played with any of them. You know, I, I will say one of the advantages of the Macs is that they can go into virtual mode and become a PC. And uh, since since they switched to Intel chips, it's been a Apparently, a pretty easy switch to do. Yeah, I can't do so, it on my Mac. Can't do it on your. You, you have an Air Mac? My Book Air. It's a first gen. Book it's Air. a little slow. Oh, okay. So it, it couldn't Pretty handle bad. it. I don't think it could. Plus, it's only 40 gig hard drives. And I'm pretty sure you have to install an actual copy of XP on there or 7. And I, that's a lot. Yeah, probably. You know, it's interesting. I've been reading that uh, autobiography of Steve Jobs. And, uh, you know, it's. <laughs> This may, may, may sound funny for a die on a wool PC guy, but it actually brought some interest in saying, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe a Mac that I would still allow me. See, one of the reasons I never switched to Mac was because I have such an investment in software on PC. I mean, I, I mean, I have thousands and thousands of dollars worth of software um, for PC, and I say, well, you know, there's no way I'm going to switch to a Mac. But now I understand on the new Macs, in particular, it uh, it almost runs. Uh, Windows programs better than Windows does. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll still never have a Mac desktop, mainly because of the price. And I can build a cheap, uh, a, a high-end, high-end PC for considerably cheaper than a desktop Mac. Oh, I agree. And w we've built our own servers here. And But, you know, really, that market, it used to be a pretty big market of people buying their own components and putting computers together. But it's the old argument is, who do you call um, when you have a problem with your computer. If you're the builder, <laughs> you've got to solve your own problems versus going to, to Dell and buying a Dell computer. Well, that's one of the reasons I've never actually taken down, you know, I've always built brand new PCs because if I have to figure out how it works, I need one to actually figure out what's wrong with it. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I want to, in the future, I always want to buy uh, Mac laptops just because I'm hard on everything. And my last laptop I have, I absolutely destroyed. 
So my MacBook Air, I've I've beaten it up pretty good, and it's still in great condition. So for, as far as laptops, I'm never going to buy a PC laptop again if I can help it. Yeah, I'm in. A, I'm really in a quandary as what to do because there there is a there is some thought to uh, for me going to a Mac uh, laptop. Uh, as long as I can run Windows stuff on it. I am a little nervous on what they're going to do far as the new versions of the OS. Are they going to become more iOS 5-like? Are they going to stay with a, the desktop type? Are they going to go like Windows 8 is allegedly supposed to do, which is supposed to be a hybrid of both? I'm not a giant fan of having the iPad type thing on... Um, on a desktop. I don't like it. I don't like the locked down. I like to be able to do whatever I want without having to jailbreak it. Um, that So that's kind of nervous. I mean, it, it seems like today's, it's now, every the, the future is going to be locked down operating systems. You know, I've heard in the rumor mill that that might, might be the next OS for like 10. When you clarify a lockdown for me. Uh, iPad is locked down. You can't do anything that's not in the iPad store. Okay, you can't add anything yeah, to it. Yeah, and right? I, I don't like that. I like that for the device, for a device like the iPad. It doesn't bother me as much. But I don't want that in, a, in an OS. It really bugs me, in, a, in an OS for a desktop or a laptop. Because, for one, that limits in what I have to do. It limits where I can get software. Apple itself, if they don't like competitors, just completely, can completely lock them out of that market in general. And then for a desktop, I, I, I don't like that. I wouldn't like it if Microsoft did it. I wouldn't like it if... Right. Google did it or Apple right. did it. I it just I don't like that. Well, that's the old argument that uh, Bill Gates always had with Steve Jobs. Uh, Gates was for licensing and let you do whatever it is you want to do on anything you want to do. Where uh, Jobs, of course, wanted to control everything, and you could only do it through Apple. So um, you you have that dichotomy there going where you know what are you for, what are you not for? Again, I'm going back that. If the Macs are so good now that not only can they run and operate as a Mac, but you can turn around and run as, and operate as a Windows machine, pretty nifty. You know, it's, you, you can't run uh, on a Windows machine. You can't run Mac. So you can build a Hackintosh. Uh, you sure about that? Yeah. You okay. can buy PC components. It's, it's not as simple as building a Windows machine, but yeah, you can build Hackintoshes. There's way to make it even download. I'm, I, you know, I'm not sure the legality, but I know people who have done it. Hmm. And you're legally buying the OS. I mean, you're paying thirty, forty dollars. How much it costs? I mean, so that's interesting. So, are you saying that there's uh, motherboards available out there that allow you to? Yes and no. I mean, there's it's it's still kind of you have to be an enthusiast to do it. From what I've seen and from what I've read, you need a bootloader. You need to do this. I mean, it, there's still steps involved. It's not as easy as putting it a disc and there you go right right so so it's still a chore but anyway I, you know I'm, I'm hopefully a few years off before I'm having to make a decision on a laptop because I don't want to actually invest any more money in a laptop since we have enough investment here in the studio as it is so I, I don't know uh, it'll be interesting to see especially once we, we hit the um, the shot show coming up so <coughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just don't want to see. I mean, it seems like we're going in reverse here. I mean, it seems like everybody wants to go to the cloud, which reminds me of the 70s and 80s when you're having dumb terminals sitting on a desktop to completely locked down operating systems. It just, I don't know. It seems like we're, we're, we're going backwards instead of forwards. Everybody praises the cloud, but, it, you know, I don't know how many people realize that they had the cloud. It was just not called the cloud. It was companies' cloud. If you think about it, everybody they had these giant servers and terminals. It's basically the cloud. It's a business cloud. I mean, in, in that sense, you know, it was always accessible outside. And you know, the difference between the internet cloud is it's accessible anywhere. Okay, so the difference is on the cloud that we're calling the cloud now is it sits on some server somewhere in a server farm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's there. So you know, you can put a fancy name on it and call it uh, uh, the cloud, but the reality is it's sitting in. Uh, a server sitting in some data center somewhere, and, and that's where it's at. And of course, hopefully, it's being backed up. But I mean, you, you never know. So, when you talk about um, the cloud, uh, you're talking about numerous companies besides Apple, of course, that are out there. That well, yeah, are there's, there's, you. there's Amazon's S3. Microsoft has Live. Um, there's there's multiple 
there's multiple services that do it. I'm pretty sure there's a, a way for you to do it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm for the cloud. I'm a big fan of Carbon. I, I mean, I use them for, for my backup on my desktop, but I just it just seems like we're, we're going backwards in the computer world instead of forwards. Now we're having, it seems like, individual devices again. Mm -hmm. You well, know, it I just, it just, I don't know. Well, I like the idea of having, like, a, a tablet, a laptop, and a computer. It just, I, ha I really hate the, the lockdown nature. I mean, that's probably one of my biggest gripes. Right. I mean, but thanks to the U.S., um, Library of Congress, I think that made made it legal to jailbreak your phones. I don't do that because I just well, you lose all your 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 ability to update. get help. And, well, yeah, you, know. you the, you know you do that. It loses updates. I mean that that part of the lockdown tablets doesn't bug me as much as it would be if it was a, a desktop. I mean, I would shoot. I mean, obviously, yeah, if yeah, I had yeah. one and. I, I, I wouldn't jailbreak my iPad for anything. It works really good. What, nor would I do the uh, my HP uh, touchpad. Touchpad. That's uh, man. I sure hope. You know, we're going to go in a round circle here. I sure hope HP and Meg uh, Whitman decides to, to stick it out and come on back and make it. Because I tell you what, I think that that OS, the Palm OS, and that little tablet is really <laughs> nice. And that's actually a good uh, introduction to my story. And here's the headline. As Palm bidding continues, HP wants a sweet deal to keep WebOS and printers. So basically, what it is, it's uh, in, uh, HP's actually looking to sell, according to this, Palm. Hmm. Um, let's see. Let's, where is it? Oh, man, I lost my spot. Let's see. In addition to selling on a good price for Palm goodies, HP is demanding that potential buyers license WebOS back to it on the cheap for use in printers and a source with knowledge on the negotiation tells VentureBeat. Um, as for the sale of Palm, it includes the, the Web OS, the Palm's patents, and you know there are comp companies, Intel, Amazon, allegedly. Um, so yeah, so HP wants to get rid of it. I, I just don't think HP knew what they had. And now, how old is that story? Because as November twenty first, twenty eleven. Oh, this new is then. brand new. Brand new then. Okay, so Meg is is uh, vacillating again because. Uh, uh, boy, I sure wish they would keep it. And, and of course, is HP decided to stay in the PC market, or are they going to exit that? Well, as I think well? Meg decided to do it because she realized um, if they just do a services market, they're going to need something to put the services on. So I think they're going to do that. I'm hoping Amazon buys it because you know right now they're on, they're on a, a, a majorly modified version of Android. I think the Palm OS would be perfect for for uh, Amazon because right now they're running. Um, all of their stuffs on uh, some form of Android, including mm -hmm. I think uh, even the Kindle. Yeah, and so and I think it would be killer if they, you know, they could do it, have their own, you know, OS, and I they don't could know tweak if, it. If if the Jeff, what's his um, Jeff Bezos, 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 I don't know if he, you know, where he is. I know with his Kindle Fire and 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 that that's supposed to be his iPad killer. Everything I've read and heard about it, it is anything but. They, they actually have one, uh, I actually saw one on a local Office Max, and I was playing with it. It's, you know, I, I don't know. I don't like, I mean, it looks like, you know, the, the Apple books? It has a little shelf icon, and right. that looks like what it is. I, I'm not too thrilled with it. I don't know if I would buy it. I like my Kindle because the battery life is insane. Hmm. Um, well, I know I, I saw uh, an like interview with Kevin Rose just recently, and he absolutely hated it. On the other hand, it's a buck ninety nine. I mean, it's well, it's, it's it, one ninety nine. So I mean, one ninety nine, two ninety nine. It's cheaper than buying an iPad. Way cheaper. No um, doubt about it. But it, it's one of those things. You know, you pay yeah. what you get for. I mean, is it worth getting the six hundred dollar tablet that everybody loves? Or so the, the thought is that Amazon buy buy Palm, buy the OS, make the uh, the touchpad, uh, have a real tablet. Uh, computer and and go into that market and they can certainly uh, if anybody can market anything it's certainly Amazon. Oh yeah, and, and Bezos is crazy enough to do it. I mean, he's, so I, I I think you know even a couple other talking heads that think it would be a good idea. I think it would be cool. I'd love to see him to do that. I mean, I like some features of WebOS. Other features I'm not too hot on, but I'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I, I love the touchpad. I mean, the only thing that's sad about it, there's just no apps. I mean, that's the problem. Any of the stuff that I use on my on my iPhone that I love, it, I just it's not there. You know, just because of right because right, right. of HP's blunder of basically saying it was dead. Yeah, I mean, Microsoft bad. was saying, "Hey, we'll give you a free phone if you decide to jump." Right. Um, you know, so everybody was grabbing over their developers. But on the other hand, this is part of the market. You know, when you got to you know kind of split down 
or you know, got like uh, what's it called? Got a uh, the numbers of the herd are dying down. You mm. know, it, it's coming down towards you know the big three, the big two. Oh right, right, right. As far as who who's going to be out there and make yeah. what? And I mean, I think right now, from what I've read, it's between Apple and uh, Google's Android. You know, Microsoft I think will always be there because they just want to be there. As far as what? Well, they're, they're Windows Phone 7. You oh, know, whether, phone. whether you like it or not, I think Microsoft at this point has enough money. They could continue selling the thing for years and have a small market. I know? haven't had the opportunity to play with a Windows Phone. I've never think, seen one to play with it. But what I heard, it's actually pretty nice. So I, I don't know. I, you know. It, hey, out there, you know, if you want to you wanna help us out, send us some products. We'd be glad to review them. Yeah, please. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be happening yet. Maybe, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll get it as, as more of, uh, as more and more of you guys get to visit us and see us and, and come and help out. We just got turned down by YouTube because we don't have enough videos or enough vis uh, visitors uh, as far as uh, becoming a YouTube partner. So I sure wish you guys would uh, uh, help us out a little bit and uh, send us some traffic. We really need it. So we really appreciate and that. I was going to say the other thing is if there's anybody you want to see us actually talk to or interview, do me a favor and uh, write us uh, an email at uh, info at T-H-E-O-G-T dot TV and put interview. You know, we, we just, we've done a couple of major interviews for here in California and we'd like to continue doing it. But we really need your help in deciding, you know, what you as an audience would like to see. And, you know, we have the ability to Skype, too. So we've already done a, a Skype interview, and we'd love to Skype you in, too, if you have something you'd like to add on. So we're really hoping to grow, and we're hoping to get your support, too. Um, and uh, if, you, if you just got a couple of extra shillings you'd like to kick down, we can do even more in our studio. Oh, boy. So that means so. we're going to have to do a PayPal button. <laughs> well, that's your next chart. Stick in a PayPal button. Leo Laporte did it. Why can't we? Yeah, we're not Leo. I know that, but okay, I'm, I'm older. I'm the old guy. So. This is true. You're you're, <laughs> you're older than him. So anyway, my turn, huh? You want me to talk about something? Do you know <sighs> what you SOPA? Do you know what SOPA is? You guys out there, do you know what SOPA is? It's probably something that you should know about. It's uh, it's called uh, Stop Online Piracy Act. The, the the bill before this was the Stop IP Act or whatever it was. Right, so this right. is the, the latest and greatest government... Uh, yeah, another attempt at censorship is, is simply what it is. We've got to break the internet because we cannot allow piracy, so we're going we're gonna to spank you and kick you off the internet, and in the meantime, we're going to um, infringe on everybody else's rights in free speech while we do it. Isn't that great? So, you know... Um, you know, I'm almost to a point I don't know what to say. We're, we're going to hopefully run a poll one of these days about seeing if anybody out there really understands what all the stuff about is. But so, so the article went on to ask about what the justification for SOPA and Protect IP is, is and, and um, basically the whole idea behind it is these rogue sites, right? So Hollywood's that's Hollywood's term for websites that happen to be located in a nation more hospitable. Uh, to copyright infringement in the United States. So yeah, did you did, did you catch that, folks? That happens to be websites that aren't hosted in U.S. Correct. That aren't being are not on U.S. Uh, not on USA control domains, which is like .dot com, .dot org, .dot net. Um, yeah. So basically, U.S. wants to stop countries. That's other countries. From with our laws to, to you know right they, to they, hurt they, them. They 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 feel that you know we. Our politicians feel that they can control all the internet, and they don't want other countries being able to, to do things. So it says here, uh, Hollywood's term for websites that happen to be located in a nation more hospitable. I can't even say that any longer. Hospitable. To, hospitable to copyright infringement than the United States. In fact, the U.S. is probably the least hospitable jurisdiction in the world for such endeavor, because the target is offshore. A lawsuit against owners uh, in the U.S. court would be futile. So there's. There's absolutely nothing that we can do to sue another country. So why the heck do we want this? Um, you know, the, the funniest thing, this is a little ancient history. <coughs> In the, was it World War II, we did the same thing with a Mauser. Right. We, you know, we used the, after World War II, Mauser, you know, I think it was, it was after or before, you know, Mauser said, hey, you're using my bolt design, give me money. And they said, huh, what are you talking about? We don't know what you're talking about. So this is, <laughs> you know, a turnabout is, is kind of fair play here. I just wish these, you know, these svances for, 
for for politicians, you know, matter no matter what side you're on, but actually get off their ass and actually, you know, listen to what we, you know, we the, the people want. I don't yeah. know too many people yeah. who are for censorship, and I've heard our senators. I heard somebody say that the Great Firewall of China was a great idea. I mean, whoever whoever said that, if it is true, needs to be removed from office. Yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. On November fifteenth, Google, Facebook, Twitter, eBay, Mozilla, Yahoo, AOL. And LinkedIn all wrote a letter to key members of the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives saying SOPA poses a serious risk to our industry's continued track record of innovation and job creation, as well as to the nation's cybersecurity. So, once again, politicians, as you talk about trying to create jobs and you're trying to do things to bring, you know, keep money into the country, stop outsourcing. SOPA is not going to help you one bit. It's going to do everything but that. It's going to hurt you. So we need to have make sure that you contact your representatives, your senators, your congressmen. You let them know that you're against SOPA and that we got to make sure that, uh, you know, that we keep the free speech on the Internet going. We just cannot continue to have censorship or we're going to end up just like other countries like China. And the other thing is, you know, um, um, whether you, what, no matter what you think about our current president, who is Barack Obama, write him. I mean, just write somebody and tell them how upset you are or, or get behind one of these movements that are, you know, basically telling the government to get your hands off our Internet. And it shouldn't, you know, it should be, you know, like the Wild West. I don't know if, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's the, it's the uh, amendment number one, you know, it's the... Free speech. It's free speech, right. you know, freedom of press. And they're trying to stop that because something looks funky to them or ooh piracy you know piracy happened even before the internet have you heard of mixtapes or there's a bunch of well it's riaa right well the, it's the it's the recording industry of america and their international branch and it's the movie picture association right they're you feeling know. they're losing money because of piracy because people can go to offshore accounts and they can buy uh movies and tapes they're not even well, buying well, I, they can I, I, download free uh copyrighted material from another country. Well, I think part of the problem is people like me. I mean, I don't download because I'm too afraid to, but I, I, it's people who want to get their content, you know, the, the Mitch Movie Pictures Association or the IIAA's content, in ways that, that are more up to date. The problem is that they so bungled everything that they were sticking to old models. I mean, when the CDs were dying, and still probably are, you know, the people downloading MP3s, they didn't like that, so they shut down Napster. Instead of coming up with legitimate ways with no DRM, They've decided to hurt their customers, and their customers are saying, hey, we don't like that. We'll do something else. And it's just a matter of market forces. Their laissez-faire attitude is not helping them at all. Yeah, absolutely. It's stifling everything. They, they just have to get more creative and not worry about every single penny that they either lose or win or whatever it is. But we, we've got to do whatever it takes to keep the Internet open and free and not have censorship. We don't need government into every aspect of our lives which we seem to get and here we are again the government thinks seems to think that they know better than we do well i'm sorry uh what we got to keep it open we got to keep it free so write your senator your congressman sopa's got to die there's another version i believe in the house as well uh protect ip is still floating around there somewhere and a net neutrality is another issue as well that ties this whole thing together and um i, I got to tell you folks we we really need to get vocal <laughs> about this you need to make sure that your congressman Please. your senator everybody knows that we're against this now i do believe this bill will die uh but with that said we got to make sure that it gets eliminated because it doesn't help anything or anybody in any way shape or form it's, so yeah this is it's it's just ridiculous i mean i, I don't understand why they what they want to do it in the first time in history I'm totally for the U.S. handing over ICANN, which, by the way, is the Internet Control and Domain or whatever. It's basically the control of the Internet. They control the TLDs, the top-level domains. And I'm for the U.S. not having it anymore because apparently we can't do a good job with the things we made. We can't steward it. And that, that drives me nuts. We invented it. We should be, you know, we're supposedly all about freedoms and, you know, what freedom is and then censorship. You know, people are smart enough to think for themselves without having to you know, having the government intervene and say, oh, this is evil. We shouldn't let you see it. I mean, that, that, that's BS. Yeah. Well, you know, I never stood, I, for, I, I never stood for, for a child. And, I, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not for any other country controlling it. I, I believe that we still have enough. And don't forget, 
uh, ICANN is not controlled just 100% by the United States. They have representatives from every country. Yeah, representatives. Yeah, that's fine. The government had said, our government themselves, I think it said at one point that, you know, if we want to shut it off, we'll do it, and we don't really care what everybody else thinks. Well, I mean, that, that bugs me. It legitimately bugs me when our government is trying to pass SOPA and other censorship stuff, and... You know, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, it's 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 r major league ridiculous. I mean, people can think to themselves, we have an amendment that apparently doesn't mean anything in our constitution. Oh, well, we have more than one. Well, it just it, it just bugs. It doesn't mean anything. So it just you know, I I don't see why they should get they should be allowed to get rid of and you know, be allowed to do this. I I don't like censorship. I'd like to be able to parse information on myself. If I want to download something, then let me reap, you know, sow the repercussions of that. You know, we sow what we reap. So I just, or we reap what we sow. So it just really pisses me off. Yeah, it, and I understand your frustration, Jonathan. I, 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 I really do. But it, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I can't go so far as to say I wish another country would control. I never I said, it, you know, I never said <laughs> any other country. I'm saying do, do like a. a like a worldwide body of ICANN, you know, something like the EU, but only, you know, with countries that have a decent track record of of non-censorship. I mean, honestly, make it, you know, like the UN, but a little harder to get in. Well, you know, one of the things about the Internet is, is that if people really understood how bubblegum and bailing wire put together much of the Internet is, they'd be surprised. Um, having run an ISP for a number of years and started one, uh, sometimes it surprises me that some of the stuff works that it works and they're getting a little better at it But it's not always always what it should be and it wouldn't take much to bring the whole thing crashing down And I'm sure that there's foreign countries out there that are doing just that they're trying to uh, cyber attack uh, us our country uh, our uh, armed services and everything and so uh, the control of ICANN, uh, I think, is very important that we still keep well, it. Is it, is it control well. of ICANN or control of most of the backbones, which we have? Well, backbones, th there's pipes everywhere. I mean, there's pipes all over our country, but there's there, the, but most of the European countries also have plenty of pipes. So it's not just that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I do agree. I I still would like to have and believe in America and hope that you know that. We'd be, that our, you know, we and our politicians would be smart enough to not let SOPA passes. But if it passes, and you know, let me preference this: if it passes, we should look on giving it up because apparently we've failed at at, at, at protecting free speech, which well, this is. Yeah, I, and I'm. Hoping. I mean, not, I mean, I'm not not failed, failed. I'm like, you know, like killing small children, failed. I mean, uh, this is this is horrible. This is an absolute abomination. Yeah, it's it's a disaster. It really is. But I, I I truly feel that it will not pass. And uh, but we have to make sure that we keep the pressure on. So please do that. Uh, we'll visit our website every now and then. We're going to have a poll, hopefully running in the next few days, where you can tell us how you feel about it or if you even know about it. So I want to make sure that you keep visiting our site. Yeah, and please drop us a line. Um, send your congressman. You know, it, it's time that we take our country back and actually let our politicians know what we think. I yep. mean, you know, they, all they can do is parse the information and, and get a feeling of what the people they're representing can do. I mean, it's, you know, it really that's what it comes down to. But, you know, they need to know. They, they need to know that we don't like some of the stuff they're doing, whether it's, you know, gun laws, whether it's, you know, this, whether it's that. You know, they should know. You know, we need to actually vote more. Well, what we have to do is we have to be educated and informed, and we, uh, we're we not. I mean, it's very easy to be laissez-faire and not, not even look at what's going on. I don't care. My vote doesn't count. Nothing matters. Well, there's an awful lot of very important things that your vote does count for. Exactly. So, you know, you really need to be involved. Um, you know, we're not, we're, we're standing here right now in our soapbox talking about this a little bit, but we're trying to bring information to you so that you can have some kind of educated information as to uh, what's going on, and particularly with the Internet. I mean, this is old guy tech, so we're trying to bring you some tech stuff, as well as political stuff, as well as local organizations and that type of thing. We're going to try to do everything, but we really want to make sure that you're educated. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to ask Jonathan to make sure that there's a link on our website to uh, to the article that's written here uh, about SOPA and how it would affect you so that you as informed consumers can study this a little bit better and, um, uh, and, and get a hold of your senator and your congressman. So 
Uh, thank you very much, John. What do you well, have? Th there is something I, I, I want to finish saying, you know, that uh, we here, the, you know, the OGT, are, we're uh, a nonpartisan. We don't care the part of, you know, the, what side of the fence you're on. Basically, our goal is to pr provide an unedited platform. You know, what you see is what you get. I don't edit it besides the ending and beginning. Um, so this is who we are. And, you know, we're, we believe in that because we believe that people want real people. Um, who the people we have on OGT, we don't edit. We, you know, they sink or they swim by themselves alone. We want the people to have as much, as much freedom, as much understanding to see who their people are. And we, and I believe the people we've had on that, as guests or interviews, have done an amazing job. I mean, so so that just didn't want to say. So we're we, we're completely middle of the road. I mean, we personally we may not be, but as an organization, we are. Absolutely, we want everybody from every side to come in the studio and sit here in the chair and uh, answer questions and talk about what it is that uh, that you feel like you need to talk about. May it be politics, may it be your business, may it be whatever. Uh, we're open to anything. We'd like you to come. And again, we can we can even do this. If you can't make it to our studio, we'll be glad to Skype you in. And, and we really want this to grow. We really think that this is a grassroots uh, studio that we've got going here that we want to bring you information. Yeah, there's thousands of people out there doing a lot of things. And, and we're here and we want to do it too. But one of the things that we want to do is help uh, small business owners. That would be great. We we really want the small business owners to come on into our studio and tell us about their passion, about their company, their business, what they have going. You know, come on in and talk about what's happening. And uh, we really want to bring this out to you and open up our studio to you because this is an opportunity. Times are tough. Times are really, really difficult. And we really want to help you as well as help ourselves. So if you know anybody out there or you yourself uh, want to come into the studio, please just get us at info at T-H-E-O-G-T dot TV and uh, send us an email saying you'd like to come in. We'll get you booked. We'd love to have you here. And again, it's open up to anybody. Uh, we, we don't discriminate. We're open to all sides of politics, all types of business. You name it. We'd love to see you come and join us. So, um, with that, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of out of things to talk about the now. And how about you, John? Yeah, no, I, that's, that's pretty much it. Those are the two stories that I, you know, I, I saw that I liked and. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we are going to have um, Corey Ward from Ward's, Ward's Automotive uh, in Diamond Springs coming in to talk to us about his business. He's got some things that he's doing, and uh, everybody knows that the um, dealerships don't necessarily treat you the best when you when you have to work on a car, and that there are options and coming to an independent mechanic is one. I can one. name some of those dealerships. But yes, I, yeah. Well, we won't do that. I, I won't. I don't want to face a lawsuit. <laughs> But anyway, uh, Corey will be in tomorrow. Look forward to that uh, the, that interview. He's a good guy, so it should yeah. be a fun interview. It'll be really good. And you know what? This is Rob from Old Guy T Tech TV. I can't even talk. I'm the old guy, Old Guy Tech TV. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. This episode of Old Guy Tech TV is brought to you by Windfall. Windfall, all your resources for El Dorado County. Everybody needs a windfall. Don't forget to ask about the free classified ads. Windfall is available to assist you in promoting your business through affordable and effective advertising. Call Windfall at 530-621-1698 or send an email to info at shopthewindfall.com. And thank you, Windfall, for supporting Old Guy Tech TV. We'll see you next time.